Here we are, I'm gonna continue to build on the chick shawl. We have a helper, and you gonna help us? Sure. I'm most excited about you teaching us how to calmly take down a lamb for a peaceful harvest. Yeah, the main thing is calmly, yeah. And you're gonna teach us that this evening? We're gonna try it. Okay. But first, we're gonna do some work on the chick shawl, and then we'll do that when we do the afternoon chores. Andy, Andy we're gonna put the cross pieces along the top, so we need two six foot pieces, and then we need uh, two five nine pieces. We need to rip two by And they're ripped, they're two by fours ripped, yeah. So first we cut them. I see that. We cut one two by four into a six foot, and then another one into a five nine, and then rip those. You got a couple, Andy? I think so. Bring them six here. Foot. We want to, we want to put the six footer across here, so we have it looping over that crack there. We don't want to like put the six footer here. Yeah, I've got. The you understand what I mean? Yep. So there's some like cross bracing going on there. Good. Oh, good job, Laurel. Not in the garden. Thank you. <laughs> That's a pathetic effort to cover it up. Uh-oh. But your bracing is different over here. I'm not crossing over that on this one. Oh, no. All the other ones are like... Uh, you're right. You have your two, two by four oh, look, look, set over. Look, there's this one. Dude, it does matter. I, I do think it's going to matter. Three we of got them. two drills. Here. Well, for here, I'm screwing. One of you on either them? side. Yeah, they all have drill bits. Papa, get yours. <laughs> There's three sides. Is there? Yes, hurry okay. up. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he's going to get us all three on it. How many people can uh, dr <laughs> uh, dr uh, drill one leg? Here we go. Oh, you guys this is so much stronger. Person. The first chick shaw I did only had one two by four here instead of two. It didn't have that corner brace. Part of this is I have the concept in my head and I can build things. I'm just not like an expert carpenter. So if I had chick shaw 1.0 though, I would not scrap it. If any of you have built that, keep it. It's great. We're just These are just minor improvements. This guy just likes these power tools. How many drills do you own now, Jonah? Two. <laughs> That's what he wants to buy with his money. At least it's not video games, right? I have been using one drill <laughs> for, tw for 20 years. <laughs> I know. And my dad had it before me. I hope those last a long time. It's still going. I guess that's why I don't like the wall so much. It's just, this thing has just been dropped, rain. I'm still on original I, batteries. I once time less than I out in the rain in it. See? It's still kicking. Yeah, and I think this is the original battery. No, it's a, it's a little slow and heavy, but it yeah. gets the job done. Mine are quick and light and fast, but they get the job done. <laughs> <laughs> you saying that one's like me, Andy? Yeah. It's big kinda and heavy slow. and kind of old. <laughs> slow. Thanks. You're, you're quick, lightning fast. <laughs> We're going to put the side posts on. And the door, well, side post. Let's do side post. Look, yes, we're here's the, here. We're gonna do this a little different too. Go get me a two foot scrap piece, John. They're going to men. Do you think I should? Tough do? decisions. Yeah. You can go if you want. I mean, this is a paying job, or you can go swimming. I can go swimming anytime. <laughs> well, <laughs> Andy's child is not always here. That's true. Yes. It's up to you, buddy. And hey, listen, I'm actually I'm gonna get on the phone any minute, so Good. you could take a thirty minute break and go. Well, let's take a thirty. Let's take a break. I've got to get on a phone meeting, okay. and you everybody go swimming, okay. and everybody wins. I'm, I'm going to get the battery charging. Let's resume in 30 minutes. All right. Sounds good. Come on, get in. Got back from the phone call. That was actually my YouTube representative. You know, one thing interesting that she pointed out and learned in that, actually most of you guys, most of your viewers, like over 70% are not subscribed. Did you guys know that? Most of my traffic is unsubscribed. So if you're feeling saucy, subscribe. And then hit the little bell so you get the notification. That lets you know when we put out a new video. Andy, you do much construction? Uh, little bits here and there. Okay. So let's just go back to what Chickshaw 1.0 did. And that was just a stripped two by four from perch to the roof. And then we did angle braces to support it. It's raining out there. We're gonna just keep working in here until the rain stops, go do chores. Set it there, I have plenty of, I guess that's bowed. Yeah. 
Looks like you can try the other side too. Try the other one. Yeah, that one's closer. That'll be good, it'll pull it down. That's looking good. We got a frame structure up. Yeah, I think it was fine. This held up just fine. See how we have the braces down there? And then we just put one screw on the top. It doesn't have to be that crazy. It's a chicken coop. Now I'm pretty sure we do the front too for the door, but let me see how wide how many we made the do door. You for I would say 30 to 50. Plenty. Rule of thumb is this. It starts up, it's about nine inches. That's how much a chicken needs for perch. You put 30 chickens in there, you still got room because they like to huddle up together. Yeah. Let's cover our ears. We're going to make our door now, our door post anyway. You guys hear that storm? That's crazy. Is it done raining yet, Andy? It's chores. Nope, it's still raining, but I think it'll pass. We gotta do our cross beam. This is where we're gonna set up the perches, or not the perches, the nesting boxes. Uh, I'm wanting to get out there and do chores. It's that time, it's past time. Still got a little bit of thunder, a little bit of drizzle. Maybe we'll do this step and maybe one more and then we'll just go. We got that bar on. I feel like we're making good steady progress on this thing. This is my new leaf, buddy. We clean up. I've, I've left. The sun is shining, it's ready to do chores, it's time to do chores, but let's tidy up. All right, Andy, we got it clean. Now what? Now chores. And then you're gonna show us, can I wait, how to hold it down, calm it down, yeah, calm before a yeah. slaughter. All right. That's very peaceful. Hey Andy, you're almost as bad as Uncle Pete. <laughs> My shoes? Uncle Pete came down here and tried this first day with flip flops on. Hey, this is Pete, how we we're roll. Not in Florida anymore. This is how we roll, <laughs> man. I always do this. Doug you want to castrated pigs? You coming in with me, or are you gonna wait out here? I don't know. What's your bull gonna do? Come on, Mister. Boy, this is easy. It's gonna be one of those days where everything goes smooth. Look, he's going with it. Oh my gosh. Hey. Don't bite the hand that feeds you, honey. Wait. Okay. Go ahead. He wants that tree. Watch this, Andy. We go right to that tree. Oh, look at that. No. Nope. He usually go get some. It looked like he was about ready to scratch. The alfalfa pellets are moldy. Okay. And well, I, I guess we can't feed them to the sheep or the cows. Yes. So they need to go to the adult chickens or the pigs. Yes. If we were gonna catch a chicken, or the lamb though, is that our only alfalfa pellets? We've ordered some more, They're actually, it's actually coming tomorrow. But that's not gonna help us, Andy's gonna be gone. We're leaving, yep. So. I can make sound with some other thing and just not give it to them. Sure. And then somebody, gra somebody grab one of the sheep. Just bring your bucket. Yeah, we only have to catch one sheep. One Time for the sheep. Uh, Jenna, will you go turn the fence off? So probably the best thing to do is do this while they're in their old paddock, where they are right now, mm -hmm. before we move them. We need to move them today. Well, hi there. Hi there. I want everybody to know, and Andy, I think you know this, we're looking for the most humane way to harvest these sheep. Yes. And it's, it's not a spiritual thing for us. It's a most humane. If that's a law, mm -hmm. kosher, a bullet to the head. We're looking for the most humane. What do you think is the most humane? Uh, Less painful for the sheep. The quicker the better. Okay. Always fast. So what's faster, a gun or a knife? That always depends on who's wielding the knife and the gun. <laughs> That's okay. not really an answer, but you can miss with a gun. And you you can, can totally miss with a gun. I've seen it happen with cows. Yeah. I've seen the cow run around the field with a bullet in its head. Yep. Not a pretty sight. All the amino acids coming up into the meat, you've just basically ruined all your good husbandry. Right. And stressed out that animal and what a horrible way to go. Yeah. And you've seen people mess you up can, with a knife? You can miss cut with a knife too. Okay. So, um, whatever you do, it's good to do it with confidence. Okay. So if you have the knife in your hand, you want to know where it's going and you want to do it quickly. Okay. If you have a gun in your hands, you want to make sure you fire okay. when you're confident that the shot is right. And you've told me 
before that you've seen peaceful both ways, I guess. I mean, the gun's loud. It can be done well. And you lose the brain with the gun. You can't eat the brain. Right. You can't utilize the whole animal. Yep. But with the knife, you can utilize the whole animal. From what you've done in the past, you said it's been a peaceful experience. Very peaceful. Hey, Pop, All right, let's you practice. For pet catching the biggest sheep because it's the only one that are pretty much trained. Okay, we'll go to that one. Well, there is one that's a littler, but it's not as trained as the big one. Well, we'll see how it goes. Okay. When we're, when we're here in November, these sheep will also be somewhat corralled. You've a told bit. me we're going to put them in the side of the barn and a stall on the side of the barn. Yeah, like the day so before. So they'll be corralled. Yeah. yeah. And so, uh, which helps give them a little bit of um, structure and where they're going, mm -hmm. kind of know where the walls are. Here, okay. they could get spooked and you know go into your net fencing and stuff okay. like that. So this isn't like an ideal situation. No, and this is like the biggest paddock they did over here too. So you might not even be able to catch one today, Andy, but we'll try. We'll see. They're on to you, Andy. Yeah, and I'm not I'm not pushing the matter too much because you don't have any solid walls no. here. But I'll come around here for a second. That's the only way we caught them is we had them in a stall. I'm going to grab this little one. I think I can grab this little one if I try. You can try it. Put your bucket down, right? Oh, they'll come to it. Look, look. See? Grab one. There you go. Wait, wait. Grab it before it eats a potato. I don't know if they're moldy or not. Oh. Oh, <laughs> they've, they've got on to me. <laughs> no, we ain't going to catch them, are we? Uh, I'll come around here and we'll see. He's got a potato decoy in there. It would be convenient if they were eating the alfalfa because we could put it in that pan and they would be eating and we could grab them. Tomorrow, they're coming tomorrow, the new alfalfa tomorrow. pellets. Did they come from a big, pretty big herd? Yeah, a huge herd. Yeah. And they, so they haven't probably... No, and I, don't, human hands haven't touched them. and I don't think they were ever moved or anything like that. They were just out in pasture. Right. I don't want to spook them too bad right now. No, we don't want to stress oh, them oh, out. Oh. You got to grab two hands on them, Jonah. I know, but I couldn't drop the bucket or they would all... I guess I could have dropped the bucket. You could try cornering them over here. I mean, you just don't but, want them to jump this perimeter yeah, fence. No, I've seen these guys But they jump. could jump this. <laughs> yeah. Do they stay at the bucket when he has the alfalfa? Come on, come on, Laurel, get one of those sheep. That's funny, they're letting Jonah get near him, but he doesn't have the, yeah, to just grab one and hold on. That's okay. Uh, but they ain't letting Andy anywhere near him. They won't let me anywhere near him either. I'm giving up watching them. I'm gonna go ahead and set up this next paddock. We've had an idea. Maybe we can flip this, this on its side, and then we have them a, something that we can herd them into and capture them. We can run this fence up along through there to give them a funnel, Andy. Yeah, it's off. So we do this. Well, if you pick that up too much, they're gonna come into that green grass. <laughs> I understand. They're not gonna come right now. Hold on. Yeah, if we stay here, they're not going to head over that way too much. We'll spread out. Papa, somebody's got to be here. Okay. You think they'll get through that? See if you can move your perimeter in. Yeah, yeah, they're not yeah. going. There we go. There we have a corral. Come down here. Come on. Wait, Jonah, you're going the wrong way, dude. Come behind me. We don't want them to charge that fence right there. No, because especially we don't have off top. You can shoot them all. <laughs> shoot them all. <laughs> Oh, you're saying we could shoot them like maybe when we're feeding them alfalfa on harvest day or something like that? No, no, I said if they get out. Oh. That'll solve the problem. And then we we'll just have meat. A little bit of lamb. <laughs> you solving the problem, aren't you? Huh? Are you solving the problem? <laughs> One less, one less chore. The meat in the freezer. That makes sense to you, doesn't it? Andy, if you got over the fence. You want me to? And then came up here. Because I'm afraid I'm going to push him against this fence. You need to get Laurel in here doing her work. I know, Laurel. Now you can come in. We'll spread out, Jonah. Let's spread out. And just grab one, Andy. Who cares? It doesn't matter which one. Come on, Jonah. Close the gap. Up, up, up. They're trying to. Just not that fast. 
no, no, no. That one was slippery. The wool, a wool sheep I could have grabbed right there. Good catch. Come on, Papa, look at that it's thing. okay, Jonah. It's okay. We got one. We got one. I think that's the two legs. Grab it by two legs. Look how calm already. Look. I don't know how to do that. It was so fast. That happened so fast. So they get really sedated and calm yeah, when they're on the ground. Look how calm. They can't flee right now. And then you can also. You're gonna practice in a second, Jonah. You know when look they're how shearing. Calm. Oops. Oh. When they're Spoke shearing. Too soon. Yeah. They're usually up like this. And then just snip, snip, snip. Yeah. Hmm. But when I grab this one, you want to grab these legs. So you can take, because when you pull up on these legs, you get all the legs off the ground. Aha. Uh -huh. And if and they can hit the ground with their legs, they're going to try to. But his legs were off the ground. So he's I'm, not trying to kick. Let me try Come over here where I am. Oh, oh, oh. No, come over here behind me. There. You're grabbing the two bottom legs. Yeah, the opposite legs. And you usually want to grab it on the inside here of this leg. Okay. So you let go here. Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. So when I was telling you to reach over them and grab the legs, you can do it that way. Now how would you cut the throat if you've got two hands on the... Well, once they're calm, you don't need to. I don't know how to um, get that there. Really? Like you can let go of the legs? Usually you can let go, yeah, here. Or you can get them... It depends is he on where calm yet? Yeah, he's pretty chill. He's got a big belly. You know, so then it's like this. Oh my gosh, you would have just done the deed. Yeah. It would have been over. But that's again where you want to be quick and know where you're cutting. Show where you cut, right below the jawbone? Yep, it would be right in there. Would you rather go too hard than too light? Well, what a lot of people do is they forget that there's hair or wool. Like, th these aren't wool sheeps. It's going to be a little sheep. easier to do that to these guys. Yeah, so there's not much matter here. Usually if there were wool, you'd have to get that out of the way. So you have access. You would have to get your He is out. just laying there for you. That is amazing. Do you put the ears over his eyes? Jonah, don't pat him. Uh, like some that. people do that. Um, but even, you know, <laughs> sometimes that they people think that calms them. You're uh, not so sh convinced. Well, you saw how it was before. I mean, I didn't, nothing changed when I did that. Yeah, okay. But they're a flight animal. They don't, these animals don't fight. So okay. once you take away their flight, they're not going anywhere. That makes sense. So that's it. He, he would hold the two inner legs. Yep, I'd pull the neck up, make sure I have a good place for my cut. And that's it. Cut. And then we would probably, we would save the blood in our case. So we'd have a bowl mm -hmm. here. Maybe Jonah with the blood. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Stirring it for harvesting the blood. After you slit his throat, oh, does he... That's, that's alright. Right. After, after you slit his throat, does he jump, jump around? No, there are convulsions at the end, like the death throes, which like any chicken. animal has, like a chicken. A chicken. You know, you brought up a you brought up a good point. Know. You brought up a good point with the chick, with the comparing this to chicken harvest. We don't shoot the chicken in the head. No. We don't pierce its brain. We don't do a stun gun. We don't. Do, there are stunners for it. Yep. But they don't bleed out properly in that case, and right. I don't think it's any better. When you saw how calm the animal was. Yeah. When you have animals out there in the field, a good marksman can shoot them and drop them no problem. Okay. But there's still a chance for error there, you know. When you have the animal on the ground... Oh, you're getting <laughs> setting, late progress, buddy. <laughs> setting still, <laughs> you know, you saw how its neck was exposed. Uh -huh. Your chance for failure is a lot less right there. Okay. Yeah, and their blood pressure drops when you have a good cut. Okay, I, I'll, I'm and looking they forward pass to seeing this. I need to pull done. this back into brace, Papa. It got under. Andy, I'm saying, I'm saying I think we ought to do both ways. I mean... This is a learning experience for all of us. Yeah, educationally. We should try it with the gun and with the knife. I agree. And see what feels better in our hearts mm -hmm. after it's over. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Guys, we're done. Let's, let's hurry up. Let's get the sheep moved. It's starting to rain. Uh, we'll call it a day. All the other chores. At the end of the vlog here, I just wanted to give you guys a quick reminder. Rebecca and I were so happy to be interviewed for the toxic home transformation. In other words, you don't you want to transfer your home from toxic 
to non-toxic. Lots of great talks in there. Our talk is tomorrow, June 28th. Let's all jump in on that. I believe there's a chat. Is there a chat, Rebecca? Yes, there's a chat. There's a chat. I'll be checking that. That'll be fun. Uh, and then if you like our talk, it's on growing food, of course, for a non-toxic lifestyle. But there are many other talks in that summit going inside the home on how to convert it. So I think it's fun. Check out our talk. Link in the description.